For me, technical proficiency is this. The premise is simple, but quite challenging to achieve. You need to figure out the most efficient movement to go from one point to the next in order to get the sound that you want. I'm going to take an example from the ending of Liszt B minor sonata where there are octaves in prestissimo. It begins in the right hand with this jump from G sharp to A sharp. Now to take a look at the score and you saw what I just did, of course that's a big jump if you see it from this G sharp going to this A sharp. But if you see it from this G sharp going to this A sharp, all of a sudden they're next to each other. And so instead of perceiving this as a huge seventh jump, you will be able to connect them as with four or five or however it's comfortable for you to use. So they become closer. A score is like a map for the composers to communicate their intentions to the players. When you first see a score, what do you look for? There are definitely more than just notes in there. Can you hear what it's supposed to sound like? Figuring this out for yourself before trying it on the instrument will give you a vantage point. Train yourself to lead with the ear. Polish the vision and the body will follow. If you just learn the notes, you will get just that. To bring a score to life, you have to translate what is in the music and find effective ways to create the mood and express the emotions. Context is very important when you are learning a piece. Extract as much information as you can from the music and off the music by looking at personal or historical facts surrounding the composer at the time the piece was written. When you look at this score, you immediately can tell that there are four voices settings, soprano, alto, tenor, bass. To look at it as melody and harmonic chords in the inner voices would be a mistake. So if that's what I wanted to achieve, first I need to make clear to my ear first what are the voices. You have the soprano. And then you have the alto. There's the tenor. There's the bass. Now, you wanted to see how they correspond with each other. So for example, the soprano and the tenor together would sound. Okay, let's see what the tenor and the bass sounds like. bass and the soprano sounds like. What about the alto and the bass? Soprano and alto. This 
will open up your ear and give you a better sense in terms of voice leading. But if you pay attention, while I was extracting the individual lines, there's a common language in each and every one of them, which is the, set, the descending half step. Grieg wrote this piece at the time that his mother passed away. So these descending half lines are the main language for your communication. It expresses the anguish, the agony, and the heaviness that he feels inside. So how can you communicate that? Now you have the notes. How could you enhance it? I can cascade this and um, overlap them a little bit to give this kind of a little bit of a halo effect. That's one. Number two, I'm going to play it in here. On the piano, after the sound happens, you cannot alter it anymore. So what do you do? You go to the next note. Essentially, your body is always a split nanosecond ahead of the sound. The action happens in between the notes. No matter how fast a piece you're playing, you always have to touch the key first before percussing it. This is how you build security and help with memorization. Wrong notes mostly happens when you're disconnected from the instrument. The purpose of spacing is to teach you how far do you need to go into the key and how, how would it feel if you feel like the key is bouncing you up. Like I'm on a trampoline. And as time goes by, the silence in between the notes just becomes smaller and smaller and smaller, but your hands already know where to go because you're never out of touch of the key from the keyboard. So now you see the many elements involved in piano playing. Piano playing is a very complex activity, and all of these elements need to be practiced daily. Unfortunately, I do not have a one-size-fits-all exercise that could remedy all problems and ailments. But if you have a specific place in a piece that you cannot solve and would like some help, I'll be more than happy to try. Thank you very much for watching. If you like the content of this channel, please don't forget to subscribe and I will see you next time.